is good. We we are living in we are living in crazy times. Crazy things are happening all the time. I want to make sure in this space uh, that we're good before we get started. So very good. All right, let me share my screen with you all. All right, can you all see that screen? Excellent. So as I said, uh, my name is uh, Darrell Buckingham, uh, Program Officer. Uh, other team members, as you can see here listed, and they are also uh, on this call, is Kiana Williams, Program Officer, uh, Kenesha Miller, Program Associate, uh, and Devonna Lawrence, Finance Associate. You all feel free to hop off mute and introduce yourselves, actually, in, in that order, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. So glad to see you all. New faces, familiar faces. Kiana Williams, Program Officer of Community Engagement. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kenesha Miller. I am the Program Associate with the Grants Team and the Community Engagement Team. Good afternoon. I'm Davonna Lawrence. I'm the Finance Associate of Central New York Community Foundation. Thank you, team. Uh, we, we've got a strong, small but mighty team of folks that work on the Black Equity and Excellence Fund. Uh, as you can see, this is an all black staff uh, that works on this fund. So we're very intentional uh, about the work that we do. Um, just to give you a little kind of quick background about the Black Equity and Excellence Fund, um, I'm not gonna go too much in detail in terms of historical context, but I will share with you uh, that this really got started, this fund was really born uh, back in June of 2020 uh, after the death of George Floyd. Uh, like many uh, other foundations and other funders and organizations around the world trying to figure out, you know, what can we do uh, to be better? Um, and where do we start? And so the Central New York Community Foundation really started doing a lot of internal work um, even before 2020. Uh, around diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so the timing was such that it just, it really made sense to do something a little bolder uh, and braver uh, in terms of funding Black-led and Black-serving uh, nonprofits here in Central New York. And so really, that's what BE&E &E is all about. Uh, it's a way to highlight and to center uh, many of the organizations that are oftentimes excluded uh, or forgotten about. And so we want to bring a certain level of equity in terms of our funding and capacity support uh, to help these organizations, those are most proximate to the issues uh, to really win, basically. Now, that was probably my shortest way of explaining that. And so, and so that's, that's BE&E in a nutshell. Uh, we'll go through more details uh, as we uh, navigate through these slides. And here's a, uh, the handy dandy video that I think we always like to play and I do hope that it works. Uh, but this was what we, we played last year. This is our, our BE&E logo reveal. So was that all right? Was that was that was that cool? We we you Wonderful. might have seen excellent. You might have seen some familiar faces uh, in that that logo uh, video, but we always play that because I think that kind of sets the tone for our conversation today. Um, you know, we we are about you know equity uh, and excellence, and so uh, that video will certainly highlights that. So as I mentioned, uh, this fund was launched uh, back in June of 2020. Uh, really focuses on building community dialogue, increasing the capacity of Black-led organizations uh, that are supporting uh, historically excluded communities and supporting projects that improves the quality of life for Black people. Um, at this point, uh, we have uh, probably funded over a million, well over a million actually, uh, of, of grants uh, out the door, and we've had over 4 million uh, grant requests. Uh, at this time. And so certainly there is uh, not just popularity, but there is a need uh, for this kind of funding. 
And we're going to do the best we can uh, to keep the party going and to be able to uh, continue to fund programs, uh, projects, and organizations uh, that need it most. So in terms of power dynamics internally, I, I don't typically spend a lot of time on this particular slide, but I do want to uh, share with you all that from a staff perspective, um, and, and I also previously mentioned that this fund is led internally by an all black team, right? And so we, many of us are actually from Syracuse, born and raised like myself, I've been here the whole time. Uh, and so uh, there's a certain familiarity uh, with some of the issues that we have here uh, locally. Um, and, you know, there's certain relationships uh, that our team has built uh, in this community, and we try to leverage that uh, in, in our work. Uh, you know, from the staff side, this also allows for equitable leadership, uh, internal integrity, and an opportunity for professional growth. From the board level, I'm going to try to sum this up, but the, the most important thing, I think, you know, and I, I, we are grateful for our board, um, is that they were willing to, uh, they kind of pretty much gave power in order to give power, right? Uh, they, uh, this is one of the funds where we don't have to wait for board approval in order to move forward, right? So it expedites the process. This is very important, and this is the essence of equity, right? This is also the essence of trust-based philanthropy which means they trust that the staff that's working on this is going to do what we need to do uh, and fund the, the projects that we need to fund. Um, you know, and it's also us trusting those uh, partner grantees, right? Trusting those in the community uh, that know exactly what the issues are. They know exactly, um, you know, ways that those issues can be improved. And so um, we trust uh, those in the community to do what you do. We're just here to serve as partners in this work. From the council side, we'll talk a little bit about the council later. It is a council, uh, again, uh, all black council of about 10 individuals to date. Um, very powerful uh, community leaders, thought leaders uh, from various backgrounds and expertise. Um, this was requested by the community. Uh, and it's also structured by the community. And our council has full decision-making uh, responsibility. Uh, and as staff and as uh, the CNYCF board, uh, we trust um, the decisions that they make in terms of who gets funding and who doesn't get funding. And so our board has a very, very tough task ahead of them each year, uh, each grant round, uh, but they do a splendid job and we are happy uh, to work with them and to have them on board. Application process. Now we get into a little bit of the nitty gritty. In terms of the application, um, some of you, you know, who have applied previously, some were funded, some were not funded. Uh, in any event, one thing that is distinctive about the Black Equity and Excellence Fund application is that the questions are a little more simplified right to the point, right? Um, some of you smaller organizations have probably applied for grants <laughs> and other, uh, you know, for other organizations, and it could be a lot, right? Um, this also is in, in, in you know, the spirit of, of trust-based philanthropy, right? The less questions I have to ask you, right, um, it, it really tell, says a lot about uh, what we think of you and, and what we think of the work that you do. And so sometimes the questions are not always necessary. Uh, we just want to get right into the meat and potatoes of what it is you do, why you're doing it, and how are you going to make change. It's really just that simple. Uh, we do have uh, creative and unique ways by which you can apply for the Black Equity and Excellence Fund. Uh, certainly, everybody should go to the website and you know do the online application. But there is a section after about a couple of questions, there's a section where you can actually upload um, either a one page write up, you can uh, upload a video presentation, or you can upload a PowerPoint, right? And so I always say we are very creative people. And so certainly we should have a creative process by which uh, you can apply for funding, right? So you do what works for you. Um, sometimes it makes sense for a particular organization to do a PowerPoint 
or a video uh, or just complete the application as you see it. That That is fine as well. Totally up to you. We just wanted to provide uh, multiple options uh, to apply. Again, more trust and less paperwork. That's what it's all about. Uh, a focused eligibility criteria. Again, black led and black serving organizations. Um, and, you know, we have had an increase in first time applicants. Um, of course, that number is diminishing and it should, right? Uh, the first year or two, I think about 75% of applicants were first time applicants to the community foundation. And, right, it was kind of two things, right? One was like, wow, we were really missing a segment of our population. We were really not reaching folks that we really needed to reach, uh, but for this fund, right? And so this fund serves as kind of an entry point or a way that we will continue to, to reach organizations that we've not reached before uh, and build relationship, uh, which is most important. Uh, so many first time applicants uh, right. as a result of this fund, um, but you know the win is that we now have contact with these organizations and individuals uh, and will continue to, uh, to foster those relationships. Eligibility, prospective applicants must meet all these requirements. They're not many, but they're kind of important, right? Um, the prospective applicant uh, should have black leadership in the senior executive position, whether that's CEO, executive director, owner, whatever that title is, uh, should be an individual that identifies as black. Uh, should also have at least 51% uh, black membership on their board or steering committee. Should also seek to explicitly serve the black community by targeting any of our 10 focus areas. And our next slide will review those 10 focus areas. Um, one of the most important things uh, in terms of eligibility is that the organization should be a 501c3 tax exempt nonprofit organization or uh, be uh, using a 501c3 fiscal sponsor. Um, with that, uh, the fiscal sponsor does not have to be from a, a, a Black organization. It can be a non-Black organization uh, that serves as the fiscal sponsor. Um, Kenesha will talk a little bit about fiscal sponsorship in a couple of slides as well. Uh, lastly, certainly not least, uh, the organization's uh, should be serving residents in Onondaga or Madison County. Here are our focus areas. These are typically the types of projects uh, that we often fund, uh, that we believe are of great importance here locally. Uh, Black creatives, leadership and advancement, LGBTQIA+, mental wellness, legacy and generational wealth, Black business, maternal health, civic engagement, youth and students, and black tech and technology. Um, so those are our 10 focus areas. You may be figuring out where you fit in, uh, in those particular areas. Um, on to our next screen here. Now, I don't know if this will play, uh, but we're gonna give it a shot. Um, what you see here, is uh, a video application uh, that was submitted in the first year of, of BE, &E. and this was from uh, Black Cub, uh, who also did our uh, our uh, logo uh, for us. Uh, but this was their application. Uh, I hope this plays good. But now I, I want you all to know <laughs> this is what Black Cub does. Okay, uh, we're not encouraging anyone to try to you know do an application on this level or uh try to meet these particular requirements again this is literally what black cub does and so it made sense for them to submit an application uh like this uh no pressure uh, we encourage you to do what works for you right and uh i had a meeting with a director of another 
uh, endorsement project that I'm doing, I said, you know, when I show up on set, I would like to see the crew look like the world that I walk around in every day. And I think it's up to all productions to make sure that your crew looks like the world we see. There was a study done by UCLA on diversity in Hollywood. Studio management is 92% white. Three out of the 10 lead actors in film are people of color. 1.4 out of 10 directors in film are people of color. And 1.4 out of 10 writers in film are people of color. Being a digital creative agency specializing in video production, photography, branding and design, we push the boundaries of comfortability to create open dialogue for community and culture. Black Cup Productions was born to change the way media showcases black people and people of color, as well as create opportunities for our community to see a different side of the film industry being behind the camera and all the different types of skills and jobs it has to offer. In our past two and a half years in business, we have worked with Center State CEO, the Allen Foundation, Behind the Woman, 100 Black Men of Syracuse, and many others. While looking for talent for these projects, such as film crew or photography help, we often find it hard to find diverse people with the skills needed for these projects. Our usual go-to was to ask people we knew, current or former students of Newhouse or the VPA film program at Syracuse. We also noticed there aren't many production companies focused on giving black and minority residents of Syracuse a voice to tell their stories their way. All you must hold Why can't I just be me? Is you, Am I not enough? I immediately assumed the position, 10 and 2. I am specifically... Usually, we are categorized within stereotypes that have contributed to the socially acceptable norms that are not necessarily in line with how the Black community lives and sees itself. We want to be the change makers to help our community develop its own voice. We believe there are many talented youth interested in the media field that may never have access or opportunity to Syracuse resources. We are asking for $25,000 to create a program with 100 Black men of Syracuse called Life Through My Own Lens. This will be a 10 to 12 week program that will teach up to 10 7th through 12th grade students technical and creative skills around storytelling. They'll be using iPads to edit and DSLRs to film their peers. The goal of the program is to empower the youth to speak their truth using their voices and giving them the skills needed to succeed. The parents will sign a participation agreement. The program will take place from February to April 2021 and one in the summer or fall. Week one will be introductions, learning outcomes, we will demo the gear, and most importantly, teach them how to protect and care for it. Week two is all about how to tell a story. We will be practicing telling the story with the iPads that we have provided them. Week three will be all the components of making a film, composition, lighting, audio. Week four will be how to construct a film, everything from pre-production to production and post. And this week, they will begin writing out their story. The following week, we will be working on a storyboard so that students can visualize what their film will look like and they will be able to organize their thoughts. In week six and seven, we will begin to film the story. A student will be on camera telling the story and another student will be behind the camera filming it. In week eight, they will begin to edit their story and we will teach them with the software that we will have installed on their iPads. Week nine is when they will be able to do radio cuts. Week 10, we will be working on inserting B-roll. Week 11, we'll be working on finalizing any transitions and cleaning up their videos for the final presentations. And finally, week 12 will be the final presentations where they will present their stories to their friends, families, and loved ones. Students will also learn public speaking, writing skills, and organization skills. This program will also help to build the confidence of black youth. We're helping to empower young student pioneers who will take these hard and soft skills back to their schools as independent thinkers and leaders within their communities. Black equity is being able to generate wealth, having value, being recognized as the best, and as a celebration of black life. But most importantly, it's about access and opportunity. With access and opportunity comes black excellence. 
we want to also have another session in the summer or fall and we will be looking for new partners willing to fund an additional session in 2021. We will also be looking to in-kind donations for equipment, space, snacks, etc. We will be the change we wish to see in the world. Thank, Thank you. So uh, again, uh, that was uh, what I thought was a pretty great uh, application uh, for funding. Uh, no pressure. Not everybody uh, uh, is expected to uh, submit that type of application, but that's just, I wanted to give you all an idea uh, sometimes on what it could look like uh, should you choose to do video. Um, again, that was pretty early on in, the, in our, our funding process. And so uh, it was good to receive something uh, like that. Um, all right, let's move right on to uh, the projects that are not supported, uh, just uh, for transparency. Um, BNE uh, does not fund annual operating budgets, uh, except when it is seed or bridge funded. Also, uh, endowments are not supported. Um, projects with religious purposes, we do not fund that as well. Loans or assistance to individuals. Medical or academic research, except when requested by a donor, which is pretty rare. Um, activities that occurred before the Community Foundation's decision day, right? Uh, we don't fund projects retroactively. Um, based on uh, the funding timeline, uh, application uh, is open, uh, and the deadline is two months from now. Right, and so usually about a month, month and a half, let's just say early September, right? And so if, if there is a project going on before that, uh, we cannot fund that project. Anytime September and beyond are projects that we can fund, right? Project funding levels. Um, this is oftentimes uh, the confusion, right? And so hopefully we can clear some things up today around the funding levels. So if you are a grassroots organization uh, or a business uh, that is going to be using a fiscal sponsor, um, your funding level is the 10,000 and under, right? This is specific to grassroots organizations and businesses that require a fiscal sponsor, right? 10,000 and under. Uh, the next level is the pilot program or small projects. Uh, there you see 11,000 uh, to 25,000 is your particular level. Now, um, I'll, I'll share now, um, you, you, may, um, you may not, you may have a small project, but you may not need 11 to 25,000. You know, apply where you think you fit uh, based on your funding request, but you do wanna try to do the best you can fall within your category. Uh, I will say, uh, if you don't, we will. Uh, we, will <laughs> we will figure out uh, which particular category uh, you best belong uh, so that we can uh, do our funding most equitably. Expansion of existing projects. So uh, that particular category is 26,000 to 55,000. And last is our large capital projects for renovations. Uh, that as you see is 50,000 to 75,000. That folks are the project funding levels. Fiscal sponsorship. Uh, Kanisha, I think you can take it from here. Yeah, thank you, Darrell. Um, so the Central New York Community Foundation funds 501c3 organizations, or commonly known as charitable organizations. Um, the National Council of Nonprofits defines a fiscal sponsor as a nonprofit organization that provides judiciary oversight, financial management, other administrative services. Um, so if you're not a 501c3, you can work with one under a formal agreement known as fiscal sponsorship. This is important to remember that this is your financial, excuse me, your organizational home. Um, they provide financial oversight and management of the grant. Um, the fiscal sponsor may sometimes take an administrative fee, generally between 10 and 20 percent, depending on how much uh, administrative time they're putting into the project. Um, 
And it's really important to align with that your fiscal sponsor needs to align with the work that you are doing. It's important to find a good match and a place where you feel comfortable and where you'll have access to the services and the support you need. Um, so the National Council of Nonprofits uh, had this um, graphic that I thought uh, sort of summed up the importance of the fiscal sponsorship. So to remember that they lend credibility, you're using their 501c3 status for your project um, and that you'll pay an administrative fee and receive uh, your, your funds flow through the 501c3 organization. Um, and you want to make sure you're communicating regularly with that with that sponsor. This is a working relationship. Um, and so I just want to emphasize to make sure that your values align uh, with the work that they're doing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kanisha. Um, you know, there, there's also the reporting piece, right? And so um, we find uh, that a final report is extremely important in terms of uh, learning from you how the process went, right? Uh, what went well, what didn't go so well, were there any uh, moments or teachable moments uh, as there's something that uh, presented a barrier uh, during your process? And so really the report, that's what the report is all about. It's an opportunity for, for us to learn um, because it could also help uh, direct the types of things that we fund uh, in the future. Uh, but it, it is also an opportunity for you uh, as the partner grantee to also sit down after all of the goings-ons and doing your project and, or, or program to really, um, you know, think about these, these types of questions. You know, what, what might we do differently or, or was it just a full success? Uh, so really, uh, this is what the report is all about. Uh, it's an opportunity to learn. Um, and the report, I believe, is about maybe 10, 10 questions or so. Uh, it's fairly short. Um, um, but uh, as you can see, there's a lot of check boxes here. So there's not a lot to write in. Uh, but we do want to learn um, a little bit more about how things went. Uh, and so we don't spend a lot of time trying to be over your back, uh, popping in. Uh, you know, that's not how we partner, right? But we do um, encourage uh, a, a report typically do uh, a year after you receive funding, right? Um, the report is also helpful should you apply again in the future, right? Uh, it's good for uh, us as reviewers to take a look to see how things went um, so that we uh, ultimately set you up to win, right? Um, this is not just about giving away money. If we say we want to partner, uh, we want to be able to support you in the right way. Now, let's get to the nitty gritty. Um, this is what, uh, from previous years, we've learned that folks really want to know, uh, other than what, what the eligibility requirement is, uh, what makes a strong application? You do all this talking, man. Uh, listen, tell me what you need to see for me, uh, in order for me to win, as you say, right? And so we want to make sure that we are providing you with the tools, uh, with the cheat code, right, on what a strong application should look like. And so what you see listed here on the screen uh, are basically uh, what the council uses as a rubric to basically score and rank your application, right? Some of these items are new, right? Uh, they've been added this year. And as I always say, each year we're tweaking, finding ways to improve our processes. Um, and so um, now we'll also share that these have not yet been approved by our council. <laughs> so there could be some changes in language some slight tweaks here, but for the most part, um, this is what uh, they are looking for. Uh, these are the things that mean the most, right? Um, does your project have community need, right? Um, Self-explanatory. Uh, does your project positively impact the black community? Are the goals consistent, clear, and measurable, right? How many students do you plan to have attend your youth program, right? What does that look like? Um, I often say that 
one of the things I think uh, sometimes missing from applications, and not all applications require this, but using some data is pretty helpful, right? Um, you know, is is there, you know, it goes back to community need, right? It's, you know, why you and why is this a big issue? Why do you think this is important for our community, right? And you can visit CNY Vitals, right? A place where you can find all types of data and information, whether it's uh, unemployment, housing, uh, and other issues uh, that our community faces. So that's CNY Vitals. You can hop on there, pull some data, information, language, drop it right into the application, all right? Uh, is the project being conducted in a logical collaborative effort? Here at the foundation, in particular, the BNE um, team, we are really big on collaboration, right? We preach it, we talk about it a lot, how, how it's very important, uh, in particular as Black people, that we're able to partner up, that we're able to leverage our resources, our knowledge and expertise, and do big things right, to really make impact in the community. Now, having said that, collaboration ain't for everybody, okay? Uh, there are some things uh, that require you to go at it alone, right? But oftentimes, uh, collaboration is a good look. If that is you, great. If not, that's okay too. Just know that it is something that we encourage. Um, and if we can be any help with that, um, let us know. Uh, are the, uh, is the project clearly defined? Uh, does it have clearly defined measures of success, right? Again, uh, data would be helpful uh, in that particular area as well. Uh, what does success look like? Uh, when you said that you wanted to have 25 students, how many students actually attended, right? How many, how many kids actually attended? Where, where, what, what does success look like for you? Uh, long lasting and meaningful community impact. I think that's self-explanatory. Uh, fits the organization's mission. Well, now here we go. Here's here's a here's a, an example of perhaps um, you know not everything is for everybody, right? Um, does your project align with your organization's mission? That's very very important, right? Not everybody can do everything. Not everything is going to be your strong point, right? There are some organizations that should be doing this work or should be doing this particular type of programming. Uh, and again, that is a great opportunity for collaboration, right? Uh, to partner with someone who's more versed or who's better at doing that or getting uh, outcomes. Um, so just make sure that uh, your mission is aligned with the type of project or program you hope to do. Uh, appropriate expenditures are being made in a cost-effective manner. Again, this is specific to the budget, right? There's a little section there where you'll fill out a budget. Um, does it make sense? And just make it make sense. That's really the bottom line. Um, again, as we partner with you, we want to set you up to win. And so, you know, we might come back and ask questions. Hey, do you think the stipend should be a little bit more compared to how much the councils are being paid or something along those lines? So we just, probably not the best example, but I, I think you all get the gist. If you don't, please pop it into the chat and we can uh, chat about it later. Financial and in-kind support. Right. Oftentimes, folks are willing to provide their time, talent and treasure uh, to your work. And if that is the case, please make sure that you identify that uh, in your application. Right. What other levels of support? Are there other funders that you have reached out to uh, that will be funding some of this work? And it's always good to know. Again, that may not always be the case, but if that is the case, it is really a good idea to make sure that you highlight that uh, and explain that on the application. And last, sustainability. This is an increasingly important thing um, for this fund, is that we are finding that there's a lot of one-time projects. And what we want to do in order to really make impact is you know, funding one-time projects. It's, it's cool, it's cute, but what, you know, really uh, having these things supported long-term is the most important thing. You know, that's how you really make impact. And so, you know, is there a plan for acquiring future funds? Who might that be? What does that look like? You know, how might we continue to help? Um, sustainability is important. And so just really thinking that through uh, and sharing that with us is uh, would be helpful. 
as you see here, these beautiful black people here, this is a uh, half of our Black Equity and Excellence Council. Um, I will I will say um, that I'm extremely proud to work um, with these uh, community leaders. Um, they are all movers and shakers uh, in our community and doing big things. Um, and we are happy to have them as part of uh, the council. Um, these are the folks that have the really difficult uh, responsibility of making decisions on funding is the other half of that uh, great council. Very powerful minds. And uh, they've been very patient with me. Um, and so I'm, I'm thankful for that as well. Again, an honor to work with this group. Up next, uh, Kiana is going to share a little bit about some of the capacity building work uh, that we do. Um, but I'm, I'm told the latest terminology now is success building. Uh, and so that's what we're trying to set folks up for, uh, whether you receive uh, BNE funding or not. These are other opportunities outside of funding, right, that we can help see you win. Um, all right. So I'm going to just share my screen right quick. Thank you. And go here. Just move this out of the way and jump over here. All right. So um, I'm going to be quick so that we can give as much time to your Q&A um, session. So the uh, Central New York Community Foundation has uh, several success slash capacity development um, building opportunities, and two of which that I have the privilege and honor of overseeing. One of them is our leadership classroom, which has been, it's our longest running program. It's been going for 30 years. This is our anniversary for that this year. This capacity uh, building is really supporting grassroots organizations, neighborhood projects, community-based organizations. It is time intensive. It requires that you have a team of five. You can apply for um, the uh, program now. It meets one Saturday per month. And the best part I think for a lot of people is you get a lot of infrastructure uh, capacity development success development framework. Um, we have Beth Broadway from Interfaith and Hassan Stevens from Good Life, who's a graduate of this program that are our consultants on this. Um, you become eligible for two grants, an operational grant of up to $1,000, and then an additional project grant once you graduate um, of $4,000. Uh, if you would like to learn more, please feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to um, meet with you one-on-one -on -one and talk about this capacity um, or success building program um, at any point in time. Our other one is our Resilia program, and this is a national program. It's an online self-paced program that gives you access to a cohort nationally as well as locally. Some of you on this call are a part of this and have been a part of it for the last two years. This um, gives you access to lots of webinars. Um, it gives you access to a funder finder of up to 60,000 funders nationally. Um, it also helps provide frameworks, templates, all kinds of things, anything and everything that you need to build up your nonprofit you can um, get it from Resilia, but the most important part is the one-to-one -one coaching that you can get from this program. And you can opt in. This year, we will only have 12 slots. So if this is something that you'd like to do, please reach out to me. And uh, with that, I will stop. Thank you, Kiana. That was, that was, um, that was good. That was quick, to the point. <laughs> um, so, Along with uh, all of that great uh, success building opportunities here at the uh, Community Foundation, uh, I will also share with you all that uh, other than our Black Equity Excellence Fund, there are other funding opportunities here as well. Uh, some of you are aware, you have uh, applied previously, uh, but for others, know that, again, BNE for you may be an entry point. Uh, for others, not so much. Uh, but we have our community grant program which is offered twice a year, usually early in the year in the spring. I think the deadline is around early March, but we have a community grant round that happens in the fall as well. And that deadline is uh, September 6th. The application may go open up uh, late summer, midsummer, around uh, perhaps July or something like that. Um, but, you know, the community grant is really our largest source of funding. It's one of the largest in the region. 
right? And a lot of those projects, uh, you know, innovative projects uh, in the area of arts, culture, civic affairs, education, uh, health, of course, that pops on the screen, uh, human services, uh, and environmental uh, issues as well. And so uh, community grant program does require a little more in terms of the application uh, and eligibility, but um, what we want to do is let you know that BE and E is certainly intentional and strategically formed uh, by you and for you. Um, but you have access to all of this, right? It's not just BE and E. And so I want you all to also think big uh, in order to do bigger things. And so although BE and E is here, um, it's great to have you shoot your shot with other funding sources here at the Community Foundation. Um, these are all uh, great opportunities. So outside of the large uh, community grant that we have, there's also all cycle funding, which typically happens when the community grant is not open, right? That's an option as well. Uh, lastly is our small grants. Uh, the small grants is basically on a rolling basis. Um, the max award uh, is about $10,000, uh, but this is also an option uh, here at the Central New York Community Foundation. Note, those ineligible to apply for the Black Equity and Excellence Fund uh, are encouraged uh, to contact us for more information about these funds and the particulars in terms of uh, start dates, deadlines, uh, and, and what uh, the eligibility criteria is. Not much different than BE&E, a little, little different, but uh, just wanted to also share that these are uh, possible options as well. Just so you know, the application is actually open now, right? Um, yeah, I was slick. I didn't say anything. Uh, it's open. I just want to make sure you came and see me today or to see us today. Uh, and so the application is open uh, as we speak. It opens up today. Uh, and the application deadline is Friday, July 12th at 11 a.m. We had to move that time from midnight because, <laughs> because what happens is folks will apply late. Uh, 11.30, 11.45, and sometimes we don't have enough time to work out the technical issues if someone should experience that. And so we bumped that up an hour. Um, again, uh, deadline is Friday, July 12th uh, at 11 p.m. All right. Um, in terms of uh, when you might be able to expect uh, uh, award payment, usually the first week of September. Right, so it takes us a while to do all the internal things for the council to review and have that four hour long meeting. Um, a lot of thought uh, goes into that process. And so first week of September is when uh, should you receive uh, funding, when you will receive that funding. Now, we are at the question portion. Let's uh, go to our chat here. I'll stop sharing. I'm not seeing my questions here. Just give me a moment. Uh, I see the first question. I'm not looking at my sheet, Corey. So I'm, I'm you know. Um, Will the slides be available? Uh, the slides are not typically available, but I guess the recording is usually available. So you can always go to our website and you can view the recording uh, of this presentation um, for any of you that wanna see that. You can even watch last year's. I hope this year was an improvement, I'm not sure. Will you, you be the judge. Um, let's see, is there limits to uh, the amount an organization can apply for? I think we covered that uh, on the funding levels. Um, so hopefully that answered your question, uh, uh, Clifford. If not, shoot me a call, bro. You know how we do. Uh, okay, let's see. Kiana, thank you for hopping in here and answering some of those questions. 
partner in crime. All right, all right. All right, there were not a lot of questions asked. Uh, I don't know if that's because we're thorough. I'm gonna go with that though. I'm gonna say we, we did our thing. Uh, but uh, certainly we do have uh, uh, 10 minutes uh, available, available time. And so if you'd like to come off mute or raise your hand or whatever works for you, feel free uh, to ask questions now. Uh, if you have any, if there's something we didn't cover, if I was not clear enough about something, uh, myself and the team uh, can help uh, have that conversation. Yes, this is Cliff Ryan speaking. Oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead Cliff. So um, I just have a quick question. Um, sure. on, on the board, um, 51% aspects, um, does it, um, what's the requirement board member wise, like, um, cause if you have a small board or a large board, um, does the 51% still apply in that regard? Like, let, I like, like, like I have a five panel board membership mm -hmm. but um there's myself and one other um african-american on the board does that qualify as a 51 percent i don't think it does i'm not a mathematician okay but okay. I, I i will I, I think if you had three of the five that would take you over the top okay. we can we can chop it up in greater detail and talk about what that board makeup is uh if you'd like man you know as yes. I tell, I'll yes. tell Cliff, I'll tell everybody here, um, I, you know, I'm always available for coffee and lunch. That doesn't mean you have to take me, but we can meet uh, to have further discussion about projects or just things going on in the community. Uh, if you have specifics about your particular project that you would like to discuss, um, Kian and I are program officers. Believe it or not, we get paid to do that. That is a part of our job is to sit down and simply kick it with you. That's what we do. Uh, and so if there's any questions you have, if there's ideas you have, if you think there's things that we can be better about, things that we are missing, or if you would just like to say how great we are, that's cool too. We can meet to discuss that. Any any other Who's questions? Uh, Darrell, I might add also, Kanisha can also um, yes. be meeting with you as well. She's our newest member of the team, so yeah. Thank you for that. Sorry, Kanisha. I mean, you're so new that I was, you know, I was giving my old spiel. And so my apology. This is a, I have a question for Ms. Williams. Ms. Williams, in regards to the Resilia uh, sure. program, is that is do, is there a cost for that? I know it's self-paced. No, it is free for you. The uh, Community Foundation sponsors you uh, for free. So we pay for you to be a part of that program because we want to make investment in your success. Okay, so the earlier we we get involved with that, or at least put our name in the hat, there might be an interview yes. or something to justify whether or not you're going to take us forward. Yes, it's going to be more competitive this year because we've reduced the slots, and so I encourage anyone who's interested to please get your application, and it's already open. The opt-in form is right on our website. All right, thank you. You're welcome. I have a question. Um, I have a project that will happen before the September 1st, um, you know, payout. Um, mm -hmm. So I want to know about the off cycle grants. Um, how do I you know, go about looking into that? Um, I know the amount is probably a little less than what I might ask for. But, you know, like I can't be choosing. So, so how do I go? How do I go about doing that? Yeah, what's up, Reg? Uh, so, so there's there's two thing. There's two thoughts here. But well, one is you can apply now for next year. Right? Mm -hmm. Uh, we just won't provide that award fund uh, just right away, right? We don't always encourage that, but that's a possibility. Um, the other thing is you can visit our website and uh, I can, I'll happily send you the link uh, where you can, um, um, actually, I'll send you the contact information for uh, my colleague and, and he can really chop it up with you. And I think even Kanisha uh, might be able to talk also to uh, Offcycle uh, grant opportunities. Um, so we'll get you in contact with the right folks. 
uh, but I believe you can go on the website to really uh, learn more about off cycle timing of it. Um, just get some details, but we can send you uh, additional information. And the second part, second question is, um, is uh, an individual that is involved with more than one not-for-profit um, apply for each? When you say, so are, are you yeah. saying that you will be applying for two different projects through two different organizations? That's correct. Yeah, I mean, that that's fine. Um, these are two two separate organizations. We don't uh, totally penalize separate. the person. Yep. I'm sorry. I said totally separate organizations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are these are two different organizations. So, um, yeah, one wouldn't prevent you from applying uh, with another. Um, we are, we we always encourage folks to be careful, mm -hmm. um, and basically being too active. Uh, mm -hmm. We we say that also because we we have found in the past that sometimes a fiscal sponsor. Right, folks will fiscal sponsor several projects, and they're like, mm, "That that doesn't seem safe." Mm -hmm. uh, I know we all want to help, um, but I don't know how helpful that is. And again, you know, we want folks to win, and we don't want to put folks in bad positions. Uh, mm -hmm. So we we would encourage not doing fiscal sponsorships for for too many organizations uh, during a particular grant round. But in your case, Reggie, I, that doesn't sound like a problem to me. Thank you. Thank you. Any, any other questions? Well, I believe so, uh, Lisa had a question as well. Hi, how are you? Hey, Lisa. It's good to see everybody. Um, so we put in a grant application last year and we did not get funded. Can mm -hmm. I use the same grant application because I have the same exact need again this year? Um, I know we did the debrief so I could tweak it, but is that like frowned upon? Do I have to start from scratch because... It, it's for uh, mental health, and we that's something that we keeps coming up in our needs assessments. No, Lisa, we want a whole new application. No, I'm kidding. I mean, that's uh, certainly, if that's what works for you, uh, you know, I would imagine if your needs are the same, if nothing has changed, um, it is what it is. You already have the language. You've already done the work. We're not here to uh, uh, slap wrists or to punish folks over using or what they've used previously. Uh, I would imagine there might have been some tweaks and changes that you might oh, yeah, want I can, to adjust. I'll update like, the data in terms yeah, of like, yeah. the needs assessment, but that's something yeah. that mental health keeps coming up um, sure. in every tenant, every resident survey that we sent, we, we complete, and I'm having difficulty getting funding you know, for that. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted yeah, to double yeah. check that when you said, hey, she looked like she put this one in last year. Yep, no gold stars for her. No, no, I, that's we're not uh, that level of petty. We we just uh, <laughs> again, if you've already done that work and there has not been change, you have not received funding already. Uh, certainly uh, use that, uh, update it, make the necessary adjustments, and submit. Okay, cool. All right, yeah. thank you. And are you guys going to do debriefs again this year for some anybody who doesn't get funded? We do. We do those debriefs. Um, Every year, right? Okay, There's cool. always an opportunity, um, and I'm glad you brought that up. There's always an opportunity to have those conversations. If you didn't get funded, um, we are happy to uh, talk about um, why you didn't get funded, what you might have done, um, to you know, some possible suggestions to improve the application for the next time. Um, but I'll be honest with you, oftentimes it's not, it's not you, it's me, as they say. Uh, sometimes these are really great applications, uh, and funding doesn't always happen because, um, as you all know, the interest in this fund has increased throughout the year. Mm -hmm. And so there are, we're receiving more applications, um, and I hate to use the word competitive, uh, but that essentially is what's happening, right? And so there are a lot of great ideas, um, that are being submitted and that the council has to review. Um, and so there is always opportunity to have those debriefs. But what I encourage more than a debrief is a pre-meeting, right? Uh, so we don't have to have the debrief. Um, if you want to, again, uh, schedule time, a phone call with uh, anyone on the team, um, you want to have a phone call, 
a Zoom, a quick 15 minute, 30 minute, whatever it is. Um, if you want to have an in-person meeting, you want to pop over here, or you want me to meet you for someplace uh, or, or any of the team, just let us know. Um, that's what we're here to do. We're here to set you up so you have the best possibility to be funded. Uh, I will tell you the other important piece about having these, if you will, pre-grant meetings is that when you've had a conversation with staff, now this is not a guarantee that you get funded, right? So let, let's not get it twisted. What I'm saying is we have a better understanding of what your project is, what the purpose of your project is, uh, and what the intended impact is going to be, right? And so what happens is as internal staff, we don't get to call the shots on what gets funded, but we do get to interject what we believe is going on with that application uh, when the council reviews it, right? So they may say, oh, you know, this looks good, but it seems like it's missing this. And we can just say, oh, just, I did have a conversation with them and I, they meant this. And this is the thing okay. that they're actually trying to do. So. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah. All right. I appreciate the clarification. Thank you. Certainly. Any other questions or, or thoughts? <laughs> yeah, I have a question. Hey, David. Hey, how's it going, sir? Uh, hello, good, everyone. Good. Just wanted to know, um, in the kind of the realm of fiscal sponsorship and helping someone else, mm -hmm. do you all keep a list of organizations or, or people in need of fiscal sponsors? It's something that our, our group was looking into doing for uh, mm -hmm. one or two people to kind of um, pass along everything we learned in this process? Yes, that, that is a great question. And we have talked about this previously. Um, we do not do that. And part of me feels like it would be a great resource to be able to do that. But part of me also feels like we don't want to be too involved. These things should happen kind of organically, these relationships and these partnerships. As a okay. foundation, we, we don't want to get into the business of suggesting, right, who should be working with who, because uh, it can get a little sticky. Uh, and so we try to stay out of the way. Uh, we know our part uh, as partners. And I don't, we were, you know, it's something that would, could be done with really good intentions, but may not work out. And I don't know if That's we want to get into that. Yeah. But thank you for that question. That's a great question. Could I, could I, I add to that, though? There Please. Are, there are ways to connect with other folks around this through our Life Needs Assessment Network, through TLC, and through Resilia. Those are some uh, really good places to meet with folks and connect, not just for that opportunity, but also for partnership. Okay. Appreciate it. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Kiana. Other questions? So this is Jackie, and um, hey, Miss Jackie, Hi. I'm driving. So sorry, I'm trying to keep my eyes. All clear. right, you you do that. Yes, we can hear you. It is so nice, first of all, to have like this is a real power team. Kanisha, I met some time ago, and we were doing the um, the uh, redistricting committee, and she just. She's just that breath that I'm not that you all and stale all by yourself, but you know, the younger version of things. So that's a good thing, first of all. And then I need to ask the question of um, so I'm our group is grassroots as in addition to just organizing with other groups. What then where do we fall in that at? I heard you say ten thousand is the cutoff for grassroots. What is that other can you expand more on then that next level and then what do those programs kind of look like um because we're not doing a one and done program so that's why i'm trying to figure out where do we fall in it yeah at. um so yeah, the that, next level is beyond 2000. yeah that's a great question um so one um the next level is the small projects Right, I think that's 11,000 to 25,000. Um, because you are a grassroots organization, that that's kind of not, not really an option, right? And so if you are a grassroots organization, anytime you require a fiscal sponsor to receive funding, essentially the 10,000 and under is where you are, right? That's, that's your funding level. And I think there's oftentimes confusion because, you know, 
uh, folks see the other levels like, oh, no, but we we're going to do a capital project. And so I'm here. Not if you require fiscal sponsor. Uh, oh, uh, we have no, we have a, we want to. Yeah, we, we have we want to expand. We want to expand our project. Not if you're a fiscal, not if you need a fiscal sponsor. Uh, that wouldn't be the proper category. So those other categories, uh, you know, to be transparent are specifically for 501c3 nonprofits that don't require a fiscal sponsor for funding. Um, so I don't know if that if that helps. No, that helps. We are a 501c3, okay. but that kind of threw me off because we're also grassroots. That's why I kind of Got didn't you. Okay. Uh, know the distinction. Okay, thank you. Got you. Very good. Other questions? All right, folks, if there are no other questions, um, I think you all know how to reach the team. Feel free to uh, reach out to us if, if, if some questions should pop up uh, uh, after this. The time now is 106, so we're a little past the hour, as promised, but uh, uh, certainly I'm glad you all joined us today. Glad we had an opportunity to present uh, and have conversation uh, about the Black Equity and Excellence Fund again. The application is now open on our website at cnycf.org slash equity uh, is where you can find that application. That particular uh, address is where you can also find a place to donate um, to that fund as well, as I always like to share. Uh, so we are all about application and donation to help keep this great work going. Um, having us take care of us is extremely important. And so know that that's an option outside of the funds that the Community Foundation offers. We do have an endowment fund, right? Well, we want to make sure that this fund is here in our community long-term for many, many years to come. So we're not yet at that point. Um, so anytime I talk about application, I do want to make sure I share that we, are, we have an endowment fund, that we're trying to make sure uh, that there's also opportunity uh, to donate to this fund. Uh, and you will learn from even our new CEO, Melanie Littlejohn, who speaks very highly of this fund. She will also, when you hear her talk, she will talk about the fact that anybody can be a philanthropist and it doesn't take $500, $5,000. It can be $5. It really does not matter. Many of you are philanthropists with your time and your talents, right? And so uh, just know that that is also an option. Just wanted to share that with you all today. Uh, again, thank you to my, my great team. Thank you to our board and certainly thank you to our council. Um, but lastly, uh, I do want to also a special thanks to the staff here at the foundation, our different departments that really help us do the things that we do, right? From our finance team, our, our development team, and of course our communications team. Uh, uh, all rock stars. We have Corey on the call now who's uh, helping us do this. Uh, so thank you very much, Corey. Hey, say hello, Corey. Um, but thank you all again uh, for joining us. Um, and if anything comes up, reach out to us. Uh, we can chop it up, figure some things out. Um, we got one last question. I'm sorry. Oh, another question came in. All right. Just one more. Yeah, Barry. We can't hear you. Sorry, I had to unmute. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Barry. Um, so I thought I heard you say that there were two cycles a year. Mm -hmm. Is it one cycle or two cycle? And if it's two cycles, I understand that the deadline for this cycle coming up is July. When's the next deadline? Gotcha. That's a great question. So let me just clarify. There's For, for Black Equity and Excellence, there's only one grant round a year. Right, and so it opened this morning, and the deadline for application is July twelfth at eleven p.m. That's Black Equity and Excellence. It's a one-time shot. Now for our community gotcha. grant round, yeah, the community grant round has has two two uh, cycles, right? One had already passed in the spring, uh, and we've got or, or what we think is spring around here, uh, and we have another one in fall, right? And that will open up late late uh, summer. I believe the deadline for that is September, All right? And so that's the community grant round. It's a different funding source, uh, but again, that is also an opportunity uh, to shoot your shot. 
Thank you. All right. All right. I think you all heard enough from me for today. Again, thank you all. Team, do you have anything to say uh, before we drop off? No, I was just going to mention to um, uh, Barry, who just had that question. I put a link in the chat if you wanted to um, open that. That's all of our grant deadlines for this upcoming year. So they're all uh, in one place for you. Thank you. Sweet. You're welcome. Thank you, Corey. All right, folks. Again, thank you. Take care. If you have any questions, please reach out and let us know. Have a great afternoon.